Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again. We're going to go out to the West Coast, to the state of California, to Los Angeles and the district of Torrance to be specific. Although I think in America they probably consider that like a city, if you like. Um, but for this review then, we are going to have a look at another brewery who I have never had anything from before. But these guys do carry a hell of a reputation, so it's really cool to be able to introduce this brewery to you on the channel at long last. So for this one we are going to have a look at my first ever beer from Monkish Brewing Company. I've never tried anything from these guys even on tap or anything like that so this should be pretty cool. But this particular beer is called the Oculars and it's a New England hazy triple IPA coming in at 10.3% ABV. So this one should be a bit of a monster actually and I'm very very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So for this review a massive thank you and shout out to Chris Contreras who's been watching the channel now for a good you know two three years something like that and um, over the years he sent me a ridiculous number of crazy American beers I hate to think what he spent on postage sending me stuff but you know his donations to the channel are hugely hugely appreciated and he told me this is one of his favorite triple IPAs that he's had so I'm very curious to see how this one turns out because you know the stuff that he sent me before the trilliums the tree houses um, the Aslins and all of these kind of things have just been you know top class beer so if he says that this is one of his favorites this is one you know that probably will be will be pretty interesting I'm sure so yeah Chris thank you for this one once again and the American reviews you're going to see over the next while the majority of those will be from beers that Chris sent me in Chris box number four or five maybe I'm actually not sure I think I put in the stream that it was box number four in the unboxing you can go and have a look at that if you're interested to see the other beers that he sent me um, but yeah he sent me a ridiculous number of beers over the years some German stuff some Belgian things and a hell of a lot of different American things that I otherwise probably wouldn't be able to get I need to figure out when I can get across to the west coast in the states but in the meantime we can definitely take a look at some of these beers thanks to Chris so yeah awesome to have subscribers like that and I hope that you guys enjoy Enjoy the, the little American mini series that we're going to have over the next little while. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I can do in the future from Monkish Brewing Company. Chris did send me one more of their beers and hopefully I can review some more of them beyond that. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to fairly regularly. A good couple of beers from the states a month I'm able to get a hold of over here. And uh, as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Monkish Brewing Company. So Monkish Brewing Company, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Torrance in Los Angeles over on the west coast of the States in California. And the company was founded by Henry and Adriana Nguyen. So Henry has a PhD in theology, he's a Vietnamese American and he actually taught at Loyola Marymount University for a period of time but apparently his interest in beer originates from when he was drinking Belgian beers during his PhD studies for that theology PhD in Scotland. Um, but he apparently started home brewing back in 2007 and was teaching part time but uh, he managed to raise the funds from his family to start his brewery after finding that that you know, really kind of was a passion that he had. So the brewery was found Founded officially in 2011, that was when all the paperwork and things were signed, but they opened up in 2012 with a capacity of only 15 barrels and a very small tap room on site. Um, if you go and read some of the early newspaper articles on the brewery, it's really interesting because they were very much a kind of bare bones operation actually. It's really interesting how uh, they managed to get things to work. Um, but apparently the plan that they had was originally to focus on uh, sour beer. But um, they basically had poured all of their money uh, they had into getting the brewery off the ground and so they couldn't afford the barrels and stuff that they actually would have needed to do this in the early days. Um, but at that point Adriana was also working full time at Toyota to support their three children and Henry would take the youngest of the children 
um, on the deliveries with him during the day and then he would brew the beers in the middle of the night so it was very much all systems go for him he was putting in a hell of a lot of hours actually um, at the brewery in the very very early days it's quite impressive how he managed to, to do that actually when you read about his work rate it's just absolutely insane um, but they tried to brew sours a little bit later on as well but eventually um, they couldn't get the acidity in the sours apparently so they decided to focus on barrel aged saisons because they gained a lot of praise for this and they found a method that really worked for them actually so it's, it's quite interesting to read about that as well um, but in 2014 Henry promoted Jennifer True uh, from the tasting room staff into uh, into the brewery so she was promoted to be the assistant brewer and um, he trained her up apparently he wanted to have someone to train uh, that had no brewing experience so he could train them up without bad habits and it was her that really started to change the focus of the brewery a little bit and she drove the growth of the hazy IPAs from Monkish apparently before that they had a sign in the bar that said no IPA obviously the IPA things uh, IPA style is very very popular in California and Henry said is that this was a little bit of a joke that they had this above the bar but then once um once uh, Jennifer got into the brewing team, that all changed, and of course Monkish have built a hell of a reputation for these uh, these these IPAs as well, actually as well as the the Belgian beers that they're doing. Uh, hopefully, I can try one of the saisons at some point as well. Um, but over the years, these guys have continued to grow, and a lot of this has apparently been um, driven by Henry's sort of perfectionism. Um, his wife says that he's basically a big ball of stress all the time, and he often kind of thinks and cares too much about things, if you like. Um, you know, he's done a lot of things like he's very picky um, about his beer and um, he always wants to make sure it's the best quality and things like that so there's been a lot of dumped batches and things like that over the years because they just haven't turned out um, quite right uh, but over the years they've constantly expanded the brewery they've added more employees to the team I think they employ about 20 people now if I uh, remember the article correctly um, but as of October 2020 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced around 610 different beers according to Untapped and it's a big mixture between you know Belgian style beers and uh, the IPAs and stuff like this I'll need to have a proper look at that um, untapped list actually and see what um, other stuff they have because it would be quite cool as I say to try some of the, the Belgian style beers and also to have a look at a few different styles and things like that as well if they've got some stouts and, uh, and stuff like that too. Um, but yeah, as I say, that's um, all I can really tell you about Monkish Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website. Uh, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. But, you know, 610 beers uh, across about eight years of operations. I think that is pretty damn impressive. What's that going to work out as? So eight times, tw you know, eight times 12. 96 months so you know that's about uh, yeah that's it's kind of crazy that when you think about it 96 months so they're outputting maybe about seven or eight beers a month depending you know on average 78 different beers every month that is pretty um pretty damn impressive actually so um yeah a very very well respected brewery i haven't seen these guys uh over here in europe that much i know that my friend craig over at kent beer reviews he had a bunch of uh, of monkish beers if i remember right i think rob hopsin has reviewed it, re reviewed a good few of them as well maybe harry at blue nose as well because he gets random stuff from america but um yeah um, i've not seen them i think I don't know if they've been to Copenhagen because they've got the free market, but they certainly haven't been here to uh, to Sweden actually. And I don't remember seeing any monkish beers at home in Scotland either. So this one for me is a real treat actually. So once again, massive thank you and shout out to uh, to one of my subscribers, Chris Contreras, for making this review happen. But yeah, and um, there's lots of other places you can find information on Monkish Brewing Company as well. You can look in the news articles and stuff. That's primarily what I used to uh, get all the information for this video for you. But um, yeah, as I say, check out the links we're going to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on so as you can see the artwork on this one is pretty interesting it's actually you know it looks it's got like eyes looking at you and it's got speed like almost like milky way spirals and stuff like this on it yeah the artwork is pretty interesting but yeah this one is called the oculars like i said um, a 10.3 percent triple IPA this one I believe this is a hazy New English uh, New England type IPA this one um, it's hot with galaxy from Australia which we know gives you lovely big pungent passion fruit and things like that mosaic which is an American hop that gives you a kind of nice tangerine orangey note there's also some citra in there 
which we know mangoes, lots of little tropical fruit complexities, all those hops sit around kind of 14% alpha acid and then there's also centennial in this one which is a nice lemony type hop, I think that one's usually about 12% alpha acid. But yeah, this one is a uh, one, I think this is a one American pint. Let's see, is it one Amer one US pint? doesn't actually say, but I'm guessing, I know, sorry, yeah, there, 16 fluid ounces. I never understand this um, with the American measurement system. Just use the metric system, guys. It makes much more sense. It's based on water. Um, but I had a comment from a few Americans saying, we love our freedom units. I thought that was quite funny. But yeah, one US pint, that is 473 millilitres. A lot of beers over here in Europe are released in the 440s these days. So um, yeah, without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting again. This one I think is going to be an absolute monster. So yeah, let's get it out and into the glass. You can smell that already. Insanity. Just insanity. Right, I think that will do for the moment when it comes to, I think we've got about two thirds of it out of the, the can there. But yeah, oh, as you can see with this one, that is one of the soupiest and gloopiest New Englands I think that I've come across. But as I've always told you with the, the, this style, as you go up the alcohol scale, you're going to get more oats, you're going to get more wheat, so therefore the beer is going to be hazier and hazier the further up the alcohol scale you go. But in terms of colour, this one, I'd say that this one is somewhere between like a kind of pineapple juice and a mango juice. It's somewhere in the middle of that. It's got the paleness of an almost pineapple juice to it, but then it's got the slightly richer colour in the middle of um, of a more mango type juice. Actually, I always compare the New England type IPAs to the um, to fruit juices because that's just really what they remind me of. They are just they they really do just look like fruit juices. You could see that when we poured this beer, there was about a quarter finger of a frothy white head. That's just faded away to be a very very thin foamy layer with a few kind of tufts, if you like, a few little wisps of uh, foam on the top there. But when it's ten point three percent, you know, probably the you know the head isn't going to retain all that much on it, you tend to find with higher alcohol beers that uh, they don't retain their head as much, although in fairness if there is a good bit of wheat in the beer sometimes that can help head retention a little bit due to you know surface tension and all of this kind of thing um, but yeah nice looking beer this one there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass I can see a couple just going up towards the bottom of the head but if I put my fingers behind the glass there you can see this one is you know easy as hell there is no way um, you're seeing through this one but um, yeah it looks really pretty damn nice actually if I shine the light through that there is nothing really coming through that at all um, so yeah it certainly looks the part for a uh, for a New England hazy style IPA um, so yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one I'm very curious to see how this beer turns out oh yeah right first impression of this one is um, it strikes me as if this is going to be a more kind of oaty leaning New England IPA. As I've said previously, you know, um, I always, uh, Chris sent me a bunch of the Trilliums and the tree houses before, and my parents actually brought me a lot of Trillium back from uh, from Boston actually. Um, I always found the Trillium IPAs were quite, um, you know, they were quite wheaty and quite uh, bitey almost, whereas the treehouse ones were a little bit more oaty, and then Alchemist, I found they were a little bit more almost farmhousey. This one reminds me a little bit more of the uh, the Trillium ones actually, the, sorry, the treehouse ones, sorry, the more oaty ones. Um, so yeah, I really like that about it. And for me, as I've told you in previous videos, when it comes to tasting the American things, I like these because it a lot of the time when I try the American ones, um, you can see that in Europe we are producing things that are um, as good as what the Americans have. So I, this is why I like reviewing the American beers as well. Um, we've got some great um, IPA breweries here in Sweden, Steep the Ariots, OO, Brewski, um, you know, Omnipoi were very capable in this style as well. And there's a few smaller breweries doing these beers too. Um, Ten, we've got Ten Hands, we've got Apex these days as well. In Copenhagen, you've got Slow Burn, you've got Gamma, you've got Dry and Bitter. Amar are very capable with these beers too. Um, but yeah, the aroma of this is lovely. It's a big, smooth, oaty um, New England IPA. And this is quite interesting for me because most of the higher alcohol ones, the triples I've had, have been a bit more wheaty and bitey. So I find it so interesting that this one is really quite smooth actually. Most of the higher alcohol 
triples that I've had in Europe tend to have a little bit of that kind of butter candy and um, where there's original type aroma to them but this one strikes me as being a bit more old school and very smooth and creamy in that sense it's really oaty leaning but if you take it in a bit more deeply if you take the aroma in a bit more deeply you start to get that more pungent wheaty bitiness at the back of the nose if you like um, so yeah I think that's definitely fair you do get a little bit of sweetness out of it in the middle of the palate uh, in the middle of the nose sorry um, but yeah for me, yeah, if you take this one in really deeply, you'll get those pungent wheaty notes at the back of your nose, but really otherwise, I find the malt base to be very oaty, very smooth and very creamy actually. I like how that goes together. Um, yeah, very straight shooting malt base for me this one, and I like that about it. And it smells as if it's still in good condition as well. So in terms of the hoppy side of the beer then, I get a little touch of earthiness out of this one. That's most likely to be the mosaic. You've got a big floral aromaticity coming out of this beer um, and you know that's from all of these hops all of these hops are uh, north of 10% alpha acid you know north I think Centennial is the lowest one at about 12% alpha acid the other ones are like 14 uh, alpha acid normally I think Galaxy can be about 15 to be honest um, but yeah you get a lot of nice big kind of floral aromatic character I don't really find this one piney or anything like that normally it would be Chinook that you would use to get the piney notes um, but yeah, the fruity notes out of this are lovely as well. But really, for me, this beer on the green side of things, very, very floral, not really spicy, just really aromatic. There's a bit of lighter grassiness there, but it's the big floral notes that really dominate for me. On the fruity side of the beer, um, it's interesting because it actually comes across as a lot softer than I thought it was going to. Um, I thought the Galaxy would really become quite pungent. And in fairness, you do get a little bit of that, um, you do get a little bit of that kind of... Um, how would you say, you do get a little touch of the, the kind of more pungent passion fruity notes. Citra is going to contribute to that as well. You do get that slightly stronger passion fruity note to it. But I find that it takes a bit of a back seat to the mangoes and things. And, you know, Galaxy is going to give you a bit of the mango as well. So Citra and Galaxy are always a very good combination in that sense. They give you a lovely kind of smooth mango. You do get a few other tropical notes out of this, like a bit of an apricotty. Um, you know, you get a bit of that softer apricot in there, and you can smell the nice, the, the kind of orangey tangerines from the mosaic as well. You'll notice them a little bit further forward on the nose. The centennial, now normally that would give you a little bit of a lemony kind of zestiness to it, and you can pick up a little bit of that at the very front of the nose, but not too much. But I always, to be honest, with centennial, I've often found that centennial comes out a bit more in the flavour than it does in the, uh, in the aroma. So I'm curious as to whether that's going to be the case with this beer. But yeah, for me, um, a lovely big floral aromatic IPA, this one, lovely fruity notes to it, and it's got a big, um, it's, it's got a big, you know, just floral aromatic quality to it as well. Nice and oaty and creamy, big and floral, and it's got an interesting kind of fruity uh, combination as well. So I really like how, uh, how this one goes together. So take a bit of time and ponder over the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it, but we're going to taste this beer now. This one is the Oculars, a 10.3% triple New England IPA from uh, Monkish Brewing Company in Torrance in Los Angeles over in America. Huge thank you to Chris once again for this review. Since this was his, he told me this was his favourite one that he'd had. This is why we're kicking off the American reviews with this one. Let's get stuck in. Slanger Skull. That's a monster. That is an absolute monster. I'll tell you something, that's stupidly drinkable for 10.3%. I mean, in fairness, you can feel a little bit of the booze out of this one, but for a 10.3%er, that's just it's stupidly drinkable, that. Um, it's a lovely beer. That's a lovely, lovely beer. I can see why Chris, um, why Chris likes this one. For me, it's interesting as well, because I actually... Compared to some of the triple IPAs that I've had from Europe recently, the one that I'm thinking of would be the Chronic from uh, Stiegberg's in Gothenburg. Um, this one, it actually feels, um, it's got the big smoothness to it, but I find that it's, this is a bit wetter 
than the Scandinavian beers. And in fairness, that's something I've kind of noticed with American beers a little bit compared to the Scandinavian ones. In Scandinavia, they love a big, thick mouthfeel. And you notice that with the Norwegian, the Swedish and the Danish beer. These are the ones that I drink you know, quite regularly. Um, for me, um, the, the, the Scandinavian triple IPAs are a bit thicker. The mouthfeel that you get on this one is a bit more akin to some of the doubles that I would have here. Um, so it's interesting, this one feels quite wet and quite clean, but I've noticed this with the stouts, the, the Imperial Stouts and stuff over in the States, to me they don't feel as thick and oily as the ones we get here in Europe. So that's my first observation about this, um, and that's maybe why I find this beer you know, very drinkable for a triple IP, maybe from the American perspective. Um, from the American perspective it might be different, but it's all about your frame of reference, you know, different people drinking beers in different parts of the world will have different frames of reference, um, but for me this is lovely. It is a little bit more old school as well, it really for me it's quite an oaty leaning, uh, pardon me, on the malty side of things, it's a very oaty leaning triple, yeah. But yeah, that's a monster. I can see why Chris liked this one. I really like this. Um, yeah, you can see the thickness. There's no, ah, there's not even any sediment really sitting in that one on the bottom of the can. I thought there might have been, but yeah, because you could see it was just a little bit thicker there. But uh, let's just taste it again and see if that statement about the mouthfeel holds up. Yeah, it's, it's a wee bit thicker. It is a wee bit thicker. Some of the, the, the stuff must have been sitting at the bottom of the can, but it's a wee bit thicker. But yeah, I think this one it does feel a little bit thicker now, in fairness, but yeah, still, I think, yeah, this one does have the same sort of mouthfeel, I guess, as some of the sort of double New Englands that we would have, but this is a lovely, um, this one is a lovely, lovely um, take on the triple. Let's try and break this one down then. Straight away, at the middle of the pot, you can feel that nice kind of white bready quality just blanketing the middle of your tongue. What I would say about the flavour though is on the malty side of things, the wheat is definitely more prominent in the flavour than the aroma would have you believe, but the beer still does lean towards that oaty side of things. So straight away you get that nice kind of wheaty, white bready quality, that blankets the middle of your tongue. As you go back onto the kind of front third of your, uh, the back third of your palate rather, you can feel the breadiness just thickens up a little bit and at the very back of the tongue you get more of the bitey elements of the, the wheat coming out of the beer which is quite nice. Um, but as you move further forward it gradually smoothens out and just um, and just sweetens up a little bit. So I really like that about um, about this beer. So yeah, you do get a little bit of booziness out of this one as well, about 10.3%. It's hard to avoid that actually. One thing I'd always said about the New England IPAs back in the day was, um, you know, it, I always found that if you went above 8% with these, it was quite hard to cover the booziness with them in a way that you, this was a problem that you never really had with the West Coasters because you had the the caramels and things like that, which would the sweetness would cover them. Um, but yeah, you can find that. They've actually done a really good job of this one. And this doesn't really have a brown sugary element to it, it's only got a little bit of that. But yeah, the back third of your palate you can feel it's a little bit thicker. Um, a nice kind of, a nice kind of, um, just a little bit more of a thicker bread, you know, as I say, a bit more bitey wheat. But then as you move into the middle third of your tongue, you can feel it just gets a little bit, it just, the mouthfeel just kind of goes down a little bit. You can feel a bit more of the kind of crisp bready things, but you start to get the oaty creaminess there towards the front half of that middle third of your tongue and as you kind of move back a little bit you can feel it gets a little bit more crisp and bready there's one or two little biscuity elements almost in the center of the palate there but i find this beer it's really the wheat it, it is a lot more balanced in the flavor between the wheat and the oats the oats are less prominent than i uh, was, was expecting them to be from the uh, from the aroma there but yeah this one's got a nice bit of um booziness to it in fairness yeah But yeah, I certainly like how um, I certainly like how this goes together. Um, lovely, you know, lovely stuff. The malt base in this is really nicely done, and you will notice that as you go into the the aftertaste a bit more, you start to get a real. You do start to get a bit of an almost kind of brown sugar butter candy type thing coming off the middle of the palate. There. It's almost like a kind of oily. Um, circle, if you like, that sits on top, right in the centre of your palate. So in fairness, yeah, you do get a little bit of that. I wasn't picking that up in the aroma, but you do get a little bit of that 
almost kind of butter candy-ish type flavour, Werther's original type thing forming in the middle of the palate there, but it's nowhere near as oily as I've had in such as I've had in the beers from in like Gamma and Dry and Bitter from Copenhagen or Stieg Beriots um, and uh, and OO Brewing from Gothenburg of course but the malty side of this beer is really nicely done but definitely more bitey and wheaty than uh, I was expecting it to be so in the aroma it smells a little bit more like it's going to be a treehouse beer but I think in the flavour it becomes a little bit more balanced almost and it's got a bit of that trillium bitiness as well which is nice hoppy side of things then So yeah, back corners of the palette, we've got a nice little bit of um, we've got a nice little bit of um, of earthiness there. But as you move further forward on this one, you do get more and more floral aromatic spice out of this one. All of the hops that are in this beer do have a bit of a kind of floral spicy note to them. Uh, it really depends when you add these these things in the brew because if you add them within the first hour you get more bitterness and for example Nelson Sovian everyone associates that hot with the, the kind of soft white green grapey flavours but it's got a hell of a it's got a hell of a spiciness to it if you use it as an early edition hop it's really surprising actually um, and Simcoe is the same Simcoe can have a hell of a spice to it if you add it in early on and it's usually quite a soft fruity one um, so yeah I'm wondering maybe they've used a bit of Columbus in this because there is something a bit distinctive about the spiciness of this beer that makes me think Columbus might have been used as an early edition hop maybe the ones that they mention on the website are the later edition hops after the first hour of the boil um, or within the last half hour I think it's it's more technically accurate to say within the last half hour of the boil if you add the hops in there you get the trade off between the bitterness and the, the kind of flavour profile so you really get more of the um, you really get more of that kind of juicy fruitiness out of it um, but yeah around the front curve of the palate you get um, a bit of a lighter grassness to it. This one does really come across as very floral and really quite spicy, actually. So I would not be surprised if Columbus is the uh, the bittering hop in here. I don't know if I'd describe this one as resinous, but, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. The, the hop that you would always use to get the more piney elements would be the Chinook. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was a little bit of... Um, of that in there too because it does have a wee bit of dankness to it almost as well but yeah the green side of the hops for me really quite floral and quite spicy rather than anything so yeah on the uh, on the fruity side of things then this is where the beer it's really quite interesting. So as I always tell you, the fruity side of the beer is the front third of your tongue and you get that nice, more oily bubble where the juicy, fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So if you go towards the back um, of that front third of your palate, it actually does have quite a dark, pungent, grapefruity quality to it. That makes me wonder a bit more. Could there be a little bit of Chinook in here as well as the, um, as well as the, the Columbus? because um, the, the the darker notes you get with this are a bit more grapefruity than passion fruity but as you move further forward from that it does gradually it transitions quite quickly to a more light passion fruit thing then you start to get the more mangoey notes out of it so this is the combination of things between the citra and the galaxy that more pungent grapefruit of course it could be down to um to, to both of those hops. I mean, I think Citra is the one that's more likely to give you a kind of grapefruity flavour out of those two. But yeah, those tropically notes are, it's, it's the Galaxy and the Citra that are doing that. So yeah, you get a darker grapefruit, then it becomes a bit more passion fruity, and then it becomes a bit more mangoey. And it kind of stays mangoey, and you, but you do get wee undertones of like apricot and stuff on this one as you move further forward but as you reach almost the tip of the tongue the, the fruity character of the beer does get a little touch more oily and this is where the mosaic starts to show its head so yeah and the, the centennial is really coming out quite nicely as well but yeah as you reach just before the front tip of your tongue you can feel the fruitiness gets a little bit more oily that's where you get these lovely tangerine notes from the um, that's where you get the lovely tangerine notes from the, the mosaic in this one and I really like how that goes together um, on the kind of front tip of your tongue that's you can feel with the grassy side of the beer you really get a big lemony zestiness out of this one that's the centennial that is what centennial is good for um, centennial is actually a really interesting hop to use on its own in like a, a double IP or something it works but you just have to be ready for a very 
you know, zesty forward um, IPA. Um, but I like Centennial. Um, I really do like Centennial as a hop, and you can really detect that big zestiness that it has here. I didn't. It, it really isn't so obvious in the aroma, but this beer does have a lovely lemony type zesty quality just on the kind of front edge of your tongue there. Uh, another very good hop is Lemon Drop, which if I remember rightly, I've got, I want to say that Lemon Drop is maybe a German hop actually. Um, um, I might be wrong on that, it could well be American, but Lemon Drop's got a really interesting kind of citrusy character to it like that as well. Centennial and Equinot are a really interesting combination too, but Motueka from New Zealand has that limey character as well which is really very nice. But yeah, I really like how this one um, this one goes together on that side of things. The more oily tangerine notes uh, and the more zesty kind of thing. But I would say that the fruits in this beer strike me as being quite pungent. It might just be because it's a triple IPA. Um, but um, yeah, the fruits in this one I find are really quite pungent and bitey almost. And that, um, it, the, the slightly more wheaty presence that the beer has you, that that develops a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste. So the bitiness, the, the kind of more pu the more pungent nature and zesty nature of the fruits and the um, the bitey nature of the wheat in this one, they have a little bit of an antagonistic relationship. They kind of go together really quite well. And um, but in the middle of the, it, it's kind of like on the front edge of the tongue uh, and the front part of the tongue and the back end of the tongue. And the beer is quite bitey, but in the middle it's a little bit more relaxed and smooth actually. So it's kind of interesting how that. Um, that side of the beer all goes together. So I think on that note, we've described the flavour profile quite well. We should move on to the um, the mouthfeel of it then. And that, this is where it's quite interesting. I can feel the, the booze in this one going to my head and at 10.3%, that's not a surprise to be honest. So, yeah. Um, this beer, I think there's there's not much doubt in my mind. I would describe this one it's full bodied, but I think it's kind of in the middle of the full bodied scale. It's not. I I don't find this one as thick as some of the one as some of the ones I've had from um, from Europe. Right enough. Um, it's just a little. It's not quite as thick as the one I'm comparing it to would be the the Chronic from Stiegbeiets in Gothenburg. That's the one that, that really is sticking in my mind at the moment. So it's not quite as thick as that. But again, like I said to you earlier, I find that the American beers are not quite as thick as the Scandinavian ones. The Scandinavian beers are probably the thickest I've come across in the world. And that's having had beer from Japan, uh, you know, from Japan, Australia, New Zealand, the States. I've not had so much from South America right enough, but I've had a lot from across Europe. And I would say that the Scandinavian beers are amongst the thickest in the world. But this one, is definitely one of the th it's one of the thicker American beers that I've had in fairness, but I still think it's it's not quite as thick as you know the Gammas, the Stieg it's the Apexes and things like that. I think if you had a triple from those and then compared it, they um, the Scandinavian brews would just make it a little bit thicker, but it's really not far away in that sense. But the carbonation is very smooth. The mouthfeel overall is really nice and smooth and. And drinkable. It's got a good bit of oily character to it as well, which I um, I really quite like, and I do appreciate that about this beer. Um, so yeah, quite a big, smooth and oily, but still very creamy leaning IPA. There's a good bit of bitiness to this beer too. When it comes to hoppy bitterness, I think this one probably sits around the 60 IBU mark. Um, it does have a nice little bit of floral spiciness, as I described for you. I suspect, um, I really do suspect um, uh, Columbus in this one and I do think there's maybe a bit of Chinook behind it too so it does have a good bit of a bitter bite to it this beer um, in terms of the um, in terms of the malty side of things yeah it, it's got a good bit of kind of oaty smoothness there a little bit of creaminess but there's a bit more wheaty bitiness in the aroma it's definitely smell it smells a little bit sweeter but it does have the bitiness more in the flavour too and the fruits are quite pungent and zesty in this one. It's got a wee bit of oiliness from the, the mosaic I think but the rest of the fruits, the centennial, the galaxy and the citra really are quite um, pungent and almost a bit more bitey in this one too. Bitey and zesty I think is a good description of this one. But um, yeah I think it's fair to say that this is a lovely lovely beer. I can see why Chris really enjoyed this one. I can really feel the booze going to my head on this beer now, so I'm probably rambling at this point. But um, yeah, I think this is a very, very nice beer, and I can see why Chris enjoyed it so much. Um, when it comes to the triple IPAs, this is definitely a more bitey and quite zesty um, 
leaning triple IPA for me. It's, it's the, the thing that really lingers into the aftertaste is the wheaty bitiness, a bit of the grapefruit and the kind of big spicy um, floral aromaticity. That's what I'm really getting into the aftertaste with this one. But um, yeah, another very, very interesting beer. My first experience of Monkish and I have to say it has been uh, quite a positive one. So yeah, it's quite nice to introduce this beer as the first one from the next uh, the next lot of beers from Chris. So yeah, massive thank you again to Chris for giving me this one to review. I've enjoyed reviewing this. It has gone to my head, to be quite honest with you. This this beer is a monster, uh, but at 10.3% you would expect that. Um, this could, I think this is one of the stronger triple IPAs that I've had in fairness. I, I, maybe, I can't remember what, I don't remember what percentage the chronic was. Maybe that was 11. Uh, I honestly don't know, but this one is going to my head a little bit, so we'll leave it at that for this review just now. But this one was the Oculars, a 10.3% triple New England IPA from Monkish Brewing Company in Torrance in Los Angeles in California over on the American West Coast. A really interesting beer, this one. Lots of stuff to think about with this, but I really enjoyed reviewing it, so I hope you enjoyed my take on this beer as well. Yeah, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Monkish as well. We will review another beer from these guys quite soon, and hopefully beyond that, we can try a few others. I do want to review some of their Belgian-style beers as well, because I'm a big fan of the Tripels, the Quadrupels, and I do enjoy a Belgian blonde as well and um, but some of their aged saisons I think that could be an interesting thing to look at as well but um, yeah definitely a brewery that I want to hit up now and um, when I do eventually make it out to the American West Coast so yeah thank you again to Chris for this review check out my social media and uh, yeah you will see another monkish review quite soon and there will be some more interesting American beers to review for you very soon too thank you again for watching and I'll catch you guys very soon the oculars 10.3 percent triple New England hazy IPA whatever you want to call it from monkish brewing company in Torrance Los Angeles California over in America slanja skull cheers <laughs>